was these founders, these people, this group of scientists and socialists that was working to create what they thought would be a better world. And these tests was developed to determine if a person would be able to to thrive in this new world that they created. And if you didn't pass, if if you tested out, like if you tested like you would be a free thinker, any type of free thinker, they killed you. And the founders, well, I saw this one was a black man and one was a black woman with white hair. And the black lady with white hair, she found out they was going to be killing people and she was really upset. She was like the head scientist behind making the, the test and she found out they was going to use her um, expertise to help determine who to kill and she was really upset about that and so they went ahead and, and formed this place it was this giant scoot it was like a it was wow this was just like that movie um I think it's called Dauntless. Dauntless? No, that was one of the factions. It was just like that. It was just like that movie. Wow. But in, instead, in that movie, it was like four different factions. And this one, it was just one. Either you made it, you tested to be in the society, or you was murdered. And it was this gigantic building that was, they was mostly living in. They slept there, everything. It was just huge, gigantic. So the lady was unsuccessful and she in trying to get them to stop this. And so she broke in. She broke in to try to stop it and she got caught. But when she got caught being a founder and everything, they didn't kill her. But they like banished her from ever coming there again. The way she got caught, she had broke in through the ceiling somehow. But she fell through the glass and she fell on the floor and they came running and they caught her. But anyway, she was banished. Well, she had a daughter. Her daughter, she was black, but her daughter looked white. So people wasn't going to expect that that was her daughter. And she looked white with black hair braided to the back almost like that tomb raider lady i think i think her hair was braided yeah her hair was braided like that laura croft i think but anyway she didn't look exactly like her laura i think is more of a brunette this lady's hair was more it was she was brunette but it was darker than that her hair was darker than that and the face was totally different but anyway in the dream this white lady was me <laughs> i was this lady this was me in another dimension because she was me and anyway so I'll just start saying I so she put me in this scoot but she didn't tell me about this scoot she didn't tell me anything because she wanted me to help her destroy it from the inside and she was using me as a spy and she didn't want me to know what was happening because she was afraid that they would find out when she put me in this scoot, I was already like a teenager. Yeah, I was already a teenager, so I wasn't a little bitty kid, but she got me in somehow. And I, I say school, but really it was just this giant, massive building. It was a school there, and I was in school. It was a school there, you showered there, you slept there, it was offices there. It was just this massive building that went on for like miles and miles. It was not short. And the top of the building was glass. It was see-through. And it was a whole bunch of windows all over. So you felt like you was outside, but you wasn't because you basically lived in this place. But we did get to go outside because it was restaurants that was outside that you can go to if you didn't want to eat inside. And so that's what happened like. I had befriended these um, kids because in there you you have to have you you have to stick around certain friends. It was just like that movie Doubt Doubtless. Oh my goodness, I haven't seen that movie in ages. 
I don't even think I'm saying a movie name right, but about the different factions and they had their friends. So we was assigned to like different friends. Like they had to be your friends. And so it was a lot of African Americans in this world. And I had made friends with this, this uh, lady, she looked mixed. And then she had an African American boyfriend and she was trying to hook me up with an African American guy as well, but he was really a jerk. So anyway, I mean, like he was really nasty. He just, he, he wanted to do nasty things and I couldn't stand being around him. So anyway, we was in this place and I felt really awkward about this place. My mom didn't really explain to me anything about this world. So I wasn't expecting anything, but I was really having a hard time fitting in. Everybody else fed in. There was a bunch of ruse. A ton, a ton of rules. And everybody was just fine with it. And I was just this odd person that was really struggling to to survive with these rules. And it was like, oh, I'm not liking this at all. And so anyway, we went to, to go to lunch, me and this lady. And she had, those guys were sitting in the restaurant waiting for us. And she went over to her boyfriend and I had to sit next to the guy that liked me. And he was, he was eyeballing me all up and down. Like he was undressing me with his eyes. And I was so disgusted. And at first I had to sit next to him and he was all hovered over me too, like licking his lips and stuff. And I was like, uh, uh, so I got up and the restaurant was like a cafeteria style. And I got up and moved my seat. Like I'm not sitting next to him. And that's how it was like everything was bothering me everything I just wasn't fitting in like the other females would would fit in they would be with him and let him do whatever he wanted to them and they was just fine with it and I just every it was like everything about this place was bothering me but I was really sweet and gentle and very nice about it just very nice but I was really hating this place from the inside but in the dream, the dream revealed to me that my mom, that's what she wanted. She wanted me to go in there fresh and not know what to expect and to really hate the system and then help her to bring the system down. But it was going to be hard because it was just the two of us against a whole, whole thing. And she was feeling, because it was showing me snippets of her as well. And she was feeling really um overwhelmed by the tats like how is just the two of them gonna be successful in doing this so we went to lunch and we left to go back to this building and when we left to go back it was we had we we had like less than a minute to get back and the girl was the one that was driving and she was driving like a maniac to get back and when you get back you have to go through some kind of scanners where you had to scan your stuff. And that was another thing. I had a whole bunch of stuff. I wanted to go to the bathroom. I wanted to fix my, you know, my face, my makeup or whatever. I, I, well, I didn't see makeup, but it, it just felt like that. It felt like I needed to go to the bathroom to fix my face. And, you know, just to get situated before I go to class. But the girl, you know, being okay with all these rules, she, she just hurried up and scanned. She was one minute late. And went to class and she was going to be fine. And I was I was like 15 minutes late because I had to go to the bathroom and fix my clothes and fix my hair and, you know, fix my makeup. I just wanted to get situated. And so I told her I was really upset about it. And I, I had asked her when we was driving back. I had asked her, I'm kind of going back and forth. But when we was driving, I said, how, how, um, how much time did you give us to get back? Like I was really nice and sweet. And she was like one minute she was like she was like not even one minute she was like um like we have to be back at a certain time she left the restaurant at that time so you really had less than a minute to hurry up and get back and get to class and she was cool with it she was like she was like i left at the time of and i said we really should leave 10 minutes early and she was like what no no you know like they was really sticklers for these rules and I said, well, next time I'm just going to bring my own car, okay? Because I had a car too. And I knew I was going to leave 10 minutes early so I wouldn't be late. And so anyway, on the way back, because I skipped this part, she left me and ran on the clutch. Like I said, she was only a minute late and I was all 
you know, fumbling around with all my stuff because I had all this different stuff and I was trying to find my scanner to scan in and uh, <laughs> I was at this thing and I was just having a hard time at the scoot. And I saw this boy, it was this part where it was this long hallway and how can I explain this? Like this hallway was really, really narrow, like only one person could fit through it. And for both of us to run, the other person has to go up and I say hallway, like this was outside. So it's more like a, it was some kind of alley that was just really, really narrow for one person. It was a wall that was up maybe mm, five, six feet. And this wall had a little edge on it. So somebody can go up the wall and run there. And I went up the wall and ran there so I can try to hurry up too so we can get back to class. And... <laughs> As I was running, I saw this, she had ran off and left me already at this point. And I saw this boy coming down and that's why I recorded this dream. Cause I mean, this was a really long dream, but I saw this boy walk in the opposite direction and he was wearing a white robe and it, it had a gold belt around his waist that looked like a, I say belt, but it looked more like a rope. It looked like a piece of rope. And it's and this boy, he looked very similar to that boy from that movie Young Jesus, I think it's called Young Jesus. It wasn't the same boy, not the same face, but it was he looked similar to that in the way that he, you know, dressed and everything. And his hair was that like length. Maybe actually it was a little bit longer than that, actually. And when I saw this little boy, but he was like the same age as the boy in the movie. And I saw him and I looked at him. And I knew he was God. I was like, that's Jesus. I knew he was God, like something on the inside of me. Everybody else that had, that had ran by and everything, they didn't even notice him. But I looked at him and I said, that's Jesus. And he looked at me and his look alone just comforted me in this school. Like he just comforted me and let me know that, that everything was going to be okay. And I had a knowing in a dream that this man was the savior. He was going to come and save us and fix this thing. Cause like I said, they was totally, they, and, and throughout this, um, school, they kept bringing you in from random tests. They was just randomly testing you. And if they found anybody that didn't test to be there, they just murdered them. They was just straight murdering them, these people. And I knew that, but my mom had did something to me because she was the head scientist and it made them always test me like I belonged there. So anyway, I saw him and it really, really comforted my heart. And then I went, I went through the scanning thing after that. And I was all, you know, fumbling around and trying to get to the bathroom and, you know, just straighten myself out. And then I went to class and then I was very, very late. And the teacher was looking at me upset because I was so late and I knew I could never do that again. Because, I mean, you couldn't, you could, this was the type of place you could not break the rules like that. If you was like breaking a bunch of rules and like that, even if you tested like you should be there, you could be killed. I mean, it was, they were straight up killing people and it was, you know, you don't break the rules. So I, I was like, yeah, next time I'm taking my own car. So anyway... I saw, I had saw, um, a glimpse of my friend too. When she, when she had ran off to her class, I just forgot to say that part. And she was like, I said, only a minute late. So then after class, um, it showed this scene where, and I don't know if this was right after class. It might've been an, it felt like it might've been the next morning where we was in the bathroom and mind you, I'm a teenager and I I'm new to this place still. And I'm still getting used to all these different rules. So I went, oh yeah, I, f I forgot to say this part. What is wrong with me? When I saw Jesus in the, in the alley, I saw a vision. And as I was looking at him, I saw a vision of him as an adult. And I saw him um, on a stage addressing the masses. He was addressing all the people. And I saw that he was going to be fixing he was going to be fixing this school. He was going to get these bad people and fix this school and everything. And the top bad guy was this black man 
whose skin was caramel complexion and my mom's skin was caramel complexion as well. So anyway, we, but it had more of a, like a reddish tint to it. Both of them had more like a reddish tint to them. And as some of the other black people was really dark and, you know, like regular black people, that's really dark. And it was just all kind of different races in this place. It was all kind of different races. So anyway, I went the next morning to the bathroom and I wanted to, you know, get ready like everybody else and. And I noticed that in the bathroom at first, it was all females. And we went and um, when you went to the bathroom, there was this tiny bottle of soap. It was a tiny bottle and it was said shampoo and something else. It probably said like shampoo and body wash. And it was just a regular, like what we would call a... Mm, like a traveling size, but it was smaller than that. It was like half the size of a traveling size of shampoo. And you could either wash your hair or you could shower, but you couldn't do both. And there was a limit on the amount of water that you could use as well. Like you, they didn't cut the water off, but you was expected to only press the water. You know, like we have those sinks here, those public sinks where you press the water and you only supposed to wash your hands that little bit, but you can keep pressing it to finish washing your hands. That's what this was like. And you had to press the water and wash your hands, your head, your your hair, or you can go in the back. And, and where you wash your hair was at the sink. You didn't go to the shower. <laughs> it was, it was a um, part of like a faucet that was up higher and, and, and it was one lower for your hands, but it was a one higher for you to wash your hair right at the sink. And so it was a bunch of stalls in there, you know, like, um, that part was similar to what we have a bunch of stalls and sinks in front of the bathroom and a mirror. And in the back was the shower area. So anyway, a lot of women was just choosing to wash their hair. Um, because the resources was limited. And then some of them went in the back because we only had this little shampoo once a day. And me, I took a tiny bit of shampoo and I washed my brown hair and I was there washing my hair and everything and people, and you know, every, that was normal. But then I took the rest of the shampoo and I went in the back and was like, I need a shower. And I went and to, um, could go take my shower. And that's when people was kind of looking at me, but people were so dull in this place, like the ones who tested to deserve to be there, even noticing anomalies like me didn't bother them too much. They was just a really, really dull. And even like everybody was really dull. Even the founder just was dull. The only way that they knew you didn't belong there really was when they tested you out. But if you kept breaking rules and breaking rules, then they would be like, you know, then you would get their attention. But because they were so dull, they looked at me like, like, that's odd. Like, what is she doing? And then they was just, it was like, almost like they was on drugs. It certainly reminded me of that movie the more I think about it. Because it was a, a faction in there where they was drugging them to be calm. And that's what these people was acting like. Like they, but they wasn't drugged. They, this is, was their real personality. And they just noticed I was like an anomaly, but they was just like, whatever, like, you know, she's odd, but whatever. And they just went on about their day. And I went in the back to go take my shower. And that's when the men came. And I noticed the men was using the same bathroom. And I was so freaked out about it. At this point, I'm naked in the shower. And men start coming in there. They was washing their hand and everything. It was a co-ed bathroom. And then when I was back in, in back of the shower, but these guys was really nasty. You know, they was just really set on nasty things. And they came in the back and I, I hurried up and I was, I started showering with my towel wrapped around me because I didn't want them to see me naked. <laughs> so I was like fumbling with this towel and trying to wash my body and they came in the shower and grouped around it was another shower in back of me and some of them even tried to come over in my shower and i i was like looking at i gave them this look like you better not 
and they went in the shower in back of me and it was like three or four of them and they was african-american again it was a lot of black people <laughs> but it was all racist and they was staring at me undressing me with their eyes and and I noticed them looking at other naked women that was just casually walking by. They just had no shame at all. And they was, um, and I was really grossed out by it. And I was like, oh my goodness, it's a co-ed bathroom. And it was just disgusting. And so anyway, then that's when the dream finally ended like that. But I knew that Jesus was going to come uh, when he got older I knew he was going to come, but he was on the earth. He was living on the earth, but he wasn't dressed like everybody else. We all had these, just like in the movie, we had these certain type of outfits that we had to wear, like a uniform. Like everybody was dressed the same. It, that's how it was. Like we was all dressed the same. And here's this little boy wearing a white robe. <laughs> it's like, he totally doesn't belong here. But the people did not even notice him. They were so, like I said, like any type of anomalies, they just looked at it like, oh, that's strange. But then they just went on their day and they didn't even care. And I looked at him and something stirred on the inside of me. I said, that's Jesus. And I didn't say Jesus Christ, but I was like, that's Jesus. And I knew he was God. I knew that. And I knew he was going to deliver us from this society. You know, I was really excited about that. And another thing that I left out, my mom, I couldn't see my mom. When she put me in this place, I could only visit her like after like so many. It felt like a year. It felt like I had to wait like a year, like only visit her once a year because we had to sneak. Because the one thing she didn't want me to do that she did tell me is not to tell anybody she was my mom. So I had to really sneak around to try to visit her. And it felt like a long, long time before I could even see her. And she really was just getting me to observe the place and try to figure out a way to to get rid of it. But it was it was hard. It was hard being there for me, you know, being odd. And everybody was all the way that they were. What an interesting world. I mean, it just goes to show like all of these movies that they make it's nothing new under the sun solomon told us that the wisest man that ever lived and so when they came out with guns and they came out with you know everything else that we think was just newly invented it existed before <laughs> it existed before so you know just like that movie um with the the different factions the dauntless faction and all these different factions it was, I think it was like four or five different factions. You know, I had never seen anything like that. Actually, that was back. I read the books on that too. That's true. Many years ago, because I did read the books and I saw a couple of movies. I think I saw one movie, maybe two. By the time I woke up and said, "Ooh, let's leave Hollywood alone. <laughs> so I don't know how many movies they made. But anyway. I might have just saw one, but I I don't know. You know, I thought that was the first time that was ever done anything like that. But I'm shocked by this dream because this dream is showing me no. There was a world that was just like that. It was it was interesting. They had all the people in this gigantic building that just went on and on and on. But you could live outside. The outside was breathable. You can go out there to go, but they was really controlling people. This they wanted a world. The founders wanted a world where they can really control people and control this new society, this new world order, so to speak, and determine who lived and died. And so people like me and my mom, we was like it. It felt like we was. But actually, it felt like it was other people like us. And I don't know how they was living, but it did honestly feel like it was other people like us that didn't fit in, but I don't know where they were. And, uh, but we was such a minority cause they was just killing us all left and right. It was crazy. After I recorded this dream, the Holy spirit began to minister to me with explosive revelations about this dream. And, um, one of the things that I noticed was the new world order 
was designed to weed out those that didn't fit in with the agenda of the elite. And the New World Order um, also showed how the goal was to control everything about uh, humans, even who they chose as friends and the resources were limited. And those are some agendas that we are facing as real potential possibilities in our world. And then, and I'm just looking at my notes. Okay, there, there were um, these anomalies that were put into this world, in this dimension. They were put into that uh, system and they didn't know who they were. They didn't really know what the agenda wa was. It was, it reminded me of like the 144,000 or it could just be like Christians in general that, um, and God's lost children as well who are in this world and we're here and this is what the Holy Spirit was, was just showing, was telling me how we're here and we, at first, you know, we try to assimilate, do what everyone else does, fit in. But over time, we began to see that this system is not a good system. This is not a good world. Um, there's a lot of evil in this world. A lot of things that are done in this world are not um, the way that the society should be ran. You know, all the murdering and you know, abortion and all, you know, just all kind of, you know, homosexuality, just, just sin in general and just a lack of a relationship with God and just all of that, the lack of love. My dad will always say the biggest problem with this world is the lack of love. And that's very true. And so, um, I was, uh, the Holy Spirit was telling me that as well. And then after we determined that the world was not a good world, then we would begin to think and say, you know, something needs to be done. We need to, things need to change. And there's a lot of God's generals who are out doing that right now. You know, I would, would name them, but I'm not going to name, um, start naming people, but they're very active in fighting against, you know, some of these laws and that are immoral, um, like abortion and, um, different things like that. And then what I do and what other ministers do as well, you know, being online or being in a church, whatever, wherever they are, is working to get people to think about that, you know, those issues, the lack of love, you know, what is it doing to your family? What is this lack of relationship with Christ doing to your family, to your environment, doing to the earth in general? So we began to realize, you know, things aren't right here and I also, uh, I'm just looking at my notes, the scanners, what I didn't say is the scanners were also uh, in place to check for weapons. So every, everything had to be scanned before you went into this building because they were looking for people that would try to, you know, start a uprise or anything with weapons. And so I just wanted to point that out. And then also Jesus Christ was in the dream as a comfort to me. So it was showing how Jesus is a comfort to the anomalies. And I know myself personally, I am an anomaly. I've never fit in. Even when I was trying to assimilate from as early as I can remember, I never, ever, ever fit in. And anyone who knows me, uh, there has been people who have uh, been on my ministry, who have known me from school and... <laughs> I would challenge in any of them to say, oh, Shawna, you fit in. I never fit in. I never, ever fit in. And every time I would try to assimilate, especially in college, I would go above the norm trying to be like the biggest sinner because I was trying to assimilate. I was trying to fit in, but I never did. I just never did. And that's how we are. And I think a lot of us can relate to that. And also the people, the masses were dull because they were asleep, just like people are asleep today. And they're dull to the things of God. And, you know, they don't want to hear anything about the end times or they don't want to even hear about God. You know, it's just they're really asleep in their minds. And that's how it was in this dream. It was like a veil was over their minds. But the awake Christians, you know, awake to our environment, awake to the things of God, awake to the, the end times and and uh, prof prophecy and things like that that God has given to his servants 
we were anomalies that definitely stood out in this world. And another thing, when the Holy Spirit was talking to me, he showed me a vision of the uh, anomalies, of different anomalies that were in this world that were assimilating. And what he showed me is that they were actually making rules for themselves. Like I, I'm, I specifically wish I was shown a group like different ones around this world at different locations, but I was specifically uh, zoomed in on a, a guy in a suit and I was shown how he was very successful on his job. He was very successful with his friends, but he had to actively make schedules and different rules to be able to fit in because he still was an anomaly and it was really hard for him. So he had to try very hard to assimilate and fit in. And the Holy Spirit was just showing me that the majority of the anomalies were assimilating. And unfortunately, that's what we have in the world today. A lot of times as Christians, we feel awkward. We, we want to you know, fit in. We want to, you know, just help friends or, you know, just do things. So we start, you know, well, let me not say we, but I used to, you know, back when I was in the world and start assimilating and just trying to fit in, but we are not made to fit in just like this lady in this dream, this uh, teenager, she, she was not designed to fit in. She was specifically put in that place, in that uh, building, in that world, uh, that place in the world to not fit in to notice that it is a, a fallen system. It is something that needs to change and that she was supposed to help to take the system down. Okay. And that's how we need to be thinking as Christians as well. So this was a very important dream. It really blew my mind that the Lord even gave me this dream. It was very long. It felt very real. I was in this dream for a couple of days, actually. I was probably in this dream for a good two or three days at least. And it was just, it really felt real. And just explosive revelation about how we are in this world that we're in right now. God bless you all. Bye.